everybody and welcome to another edition of Offscript by It's All Fun and Games. I'm your host for the evening, afternoon, morning, whenever it is that you're listening to this, Melvin Rodriguez. And I'm joined by the always sexy voice in the business, Mr. Matthew Howard. Howdy. Howdy, Matt. So for those of you who are just joining us for the first time on the Offscript side of It's All Fun and Games, uh, the way this works is... Matt? All right. So uh, this is a... Oh, was I not supposed to explain it? No, no, no. You were totally fine. I was going to say, like, I threw you... I, I wanted to see if you were ready. Because I just kind of threw it threw it at you. <laughs> All right. Well, this is a series in which we take a series that one of us knows very well and the other one has limited knowledge of. The person who knows the series well will compile a group of screenshots depicting a game or a series of games and the other person will then have to use those screenshots and whatever knowledge they've picked up about the series through social osmosis to reconstruct what they believe the plot is so wonderful. in this episode what's that wonderful no no the, the great description okay <laughs> yeah in this episode we are going to be starting the metroid series we're going to be covering Metroids 1 to 4, as well as a bit of the backstory that isn't covered in the games. I have compiled a group of screenshots from uh, said games. Specifically, we're using the remakes of the first two games and some bits and pieces of the manga for Samus's backstory. And okay. Melvin is going to attempt to describe the plot of Metroid using what I have provided. Exactly. I'm very excited for this. So obviously, it's, it's worth noting that this is heavily spoiler territory. So whenever we're talking yeah. about this, obviously, when I'm trying to construct the story together or Matt will correct me as I go along. So obviously, you yeah. will find out the truth. You will find out what the story is all about. So if you haven't played them already and you really want to experience it by yourself, go right ahead. Cut us off here. Play the games and come back, though. You got to come back. Otherwise, alternatively, if you want to get caught up uh, in time for Dread, <laughs> exactly. If you want to get, why not here? <laughs> Dread is coming up very soon, and let me tell you, you think you have enough time to play this game? Let, let me just shorten it down for you. You don't. So let me let let's just recap the story. Forget all about it. If you didn't play this game until now, what what year this game come out? Like 1984? Come on, you had you had your chance. <laughs> so. We're going to be doing, uh, like uh, like Matt mentioned, Metroid. I, I gave you the spoiler one already, so please uh, let, let us know. But if you if you are one of those that are that is going to leave, make sure to check out all the all the other It's All Fun and Game content. You know what I mean? We have the, um, the weekly discussion show of what we've been playing, just a casual conversation of everything going on. And then we also have our post-mortems where we discuss the game that we've been playing together and just kind of dissect it a little bit more. So go check those out because those are a re uh, real fun time there. Okay. Oh, and where did you check them out? It's on all podcast services around the globe, including Spotify. Or if you want to watch the video version and look at Matt's beautiful smile, you can do so by looking at the YouTube. Because apparently that's what all everybody wants to look at nowadays, Matt's beautiful smile. You don't want to miss it. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to get started right away. Yeah. And if for you're audio only listeners, Melvin will attempt to describe what he is seeing oh, yeah. before he uh, goes through and gives us his beautiful rendition of the story of Metroid. Exactly. So, by the way, this is the first time I'm looking at these pictures. So, I am making the story as I go along. So, this will be a, a fun ride. So, uh, strap on. Let's get it started. So, to begin with, I see it, but we're always going to start with the manga because these are just two. I see both manga covers, uh, one and two, looks like here. Uh, and the yep. first one, it seems like we're looking at a young Samus and the Metroid suit in the background. And, well, what do you call that? Is it a Metroid suit or what, does it have a specific name? Uh, that would be the power suit. The power suit. Thank you very much. And in the second picture, we see uh, what it looks like a more grown-up version of Samus. Apparently, her eyes shrunk for some reason. And the same, but more action pose in the, the background of the power suit. So, we'll see We'll see how this goes about. And apparently, this is all in kanji. This is a, this, this was translated, right? Uh, the screenshots I have are translated. Just remember, you have to read from uh, left to right. Left to right. Thank you very much. Okay. 
So or sorry, it. right to left. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so... They... <laughs> left to right is normal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what the heck happened? Wait, what? Uh -oh. Okay, sorry. sorry. The, my, the, 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 yeah. my pictures were... It, it went back to the main picture and then go, went back to the first one. Anyway, what we see, <laughs> what I see in this one is there's, there's a panel on the on the right that it looks like a mine and he says what was a mineral mine here at star colony k2l and you see just a picture of the colony uh then you see a, a bunch of astronauts like taking some power cells out and he says uh a floor a floral a floral light is that yeah don't worry too much about that word <laughs> it's not going to come up again uh this mineral was used as the ignition module in all spare fairing vessels so obviously we got some sort of fuel that is helping us do the space programs a little bit faster i guess um then we see the uh like a rocket or something kind of launching my guess is this is the typical start to any like space story where they like humanity for some reason they found some resource whether it is in their visit to Mars or to the moon they usually find some strange element that we were not aware of and that advances our technology by a mile or by a long shot light years I guess since we're in space so this is probably the typical one we saw this a uh, similar trope in mass effect and i think we also saw it in like dead space and all those uh, space gaming genres and all their uh, uh fiction so i think that the, this the, this the beginning is pretty self-explanatory um but then the next one is not so much the next panel that i see is what looks like a shadow of a wing or a cape uh, but then in the other picture, it looks like Charizard on top of a tree. But obviously, <laughs> that is not Charizard. That's probably the dragon that we all know as Ridley. Uh, because for whatever reason, I, I do know a little bit. So obviously, this name is the the one. And then we see a lot of yeah. like shadowy figures kind of, I don't know, praying in, in a... In a line, and I, I feel like that's those are just like the reverent, the cult members of Ridley's powerhouse. I don't know, something like that. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, I'm all not, right. This, oh, this looked like alien, like actually, these people from the movie Alien. So, yeah, I'm seeing a bunch of alien attacking humans and just literally destroying them. And you see, grr, grr, help me. And obviously, it looks like Ridley invaded the human colony and just decided to, to kill everybody. Because uh, that's uh, what big villains do. And then we see the aftermath of such invasion. We see a lot of bodies and a lot of ruins. And in the bottom side, we see what looks like parrots that could talk and are old. But <laughs> I don't know. Wise? Because they have ropes. that, that, that you, you know when you buy a rope, those were like the Jedi ropes. And you know, okay, I look intellectual. So that's what the birds look like. <laughs> And he says, oh, how terrible. The emergency code to the Federation police. I know it was sent from K2L, but I never thought it would be this bad. Okay, so they call the police. They call 911 for the response time. So oh, <laughs> let me tell you, not great. <laughs> not great at all. Everything was is destroyed already. And apparently this uh, parrot police is the, the Federation force. And then in the next picture, we see a, a picture of Gary with Evie uh, looking at the moon. <laughs> because it looks like just a, a boy or a girl, a small kid. And it literally what looks like Evie, but with bigger ears. Like a, a rabbit and Evie together. It's just the shadowy figures. My guess is that Samus was... This is Samus. And the this is just the beginning of her being abducted by these uh, parrot police. Uh, in the next uh, one, we see the second planet from the sun, FS-176 CVs. After the space pirate raid, the Choso brought me the only remaining survivor to this planet. See, that's what I'm talking about. Samus was brought over by the, the pirate police called the Choso, uh, which for some reason, every time that I hear it, it reminds me of chorizo, which is one of a very <laughs> savory dish. Um... And yes, and apparently they went to a planet called Seabees, the second planet from the sun. I don't know which sun are we talking about. This must be a different galaxy because there's no way that <laughs> is it Venus? Yeah, Venus. I think Mercury? it's I think it's a different. There's a there's a whole heap of uh, or, galaxies, solar, solar systems. Yeah, yeah, solar systems. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So this is another one of those. 
Uh, then we got a picture of what looks like a, a robot eye in the middle of a bunch of vines, and it says Mother Brain. Okay, so we are looking a little bit into the technology that the Choso developed. And in the next picture, wow, this this pair of police is not, not doing well. The Choso seem to be incubating some sort of creature, but to me that looks like <laughs> Samus. It seems to be like incubating Samus or infusing her with something. Imagine like a big uh, spherical chamber and there's a bunch of goo around it. So obviously they're doing some experiments on, on Samus. Make, oh, is that how she can actually curl into a ball? Maybe this is the reason. They, they configure her whole skeleton to so it can actually it flex so much that it can go into the, the that ball that we see in all the games. Uh, and then we get a cutback of 11 years later. We see the power suit. Obviously, Samus is good to go, ready to uh, power through. She was brought up by the by the parrot police. So obviously, she became a, a police member by herself. And we see the next one is General Adam Mal Malkovich. Samus Aran. So I'm guessing, there. obviously, this is not the only human colony. And she was brought up by the Choso people. Um, she gets to meet other humans in the process, but it's the same way as Tarzan or the Jungle Book, where she doesn't like the other humans and she doesn't gonna get to get get along because she just loves the the parrot police so much. Uh, but she has to get along with. Uh, she has to for her job. She has to go and interact with other humans. Mm -hmm. uh, in this next picture, we see a little braid, which I know for a fact that is called a Metroid inside of a tank with tentacles on it. I didn't know that they could power that up. Um, what's and there's the, one of the Choso members saying, what's wrong? The Metroid is responding. So I guess they were experimenting with this life form that they didn't know about called the Metroid. And uh, it says emergency situation warning, emergency situation warning. So I'm, I'm guessing that the Metroid decided I had enough of your experiments. I'm going to um, now I'm basically a, I have a brain, a mind of my own. So I'm going to control this, make this robot that you put me in. I'm not going to start destroying everything. And that's the end of the manga. I'm looking All right. So let's, mission. yeah, let's get back and see how you did. Nice. So yeah, we're starting on K2L, uh, which is just Samus's homeworld. Specifically what they're mining isn't super important. The implication is that like, this isn't an especially important planet. Uh, it just happened to get caught up in a raid by space pirates, which you got. Um, so Ridley comes down. Ridley is responsible for killing Samus's parents, actually. I didn't get a screenshot of that, but he does that. Uh, I mean, she Samus was the only survivor, the only... so I'm guessing yeah, that that was... She was the... Why? Yeah, but like Ridley, Ridley personally killed her parents, Okay, okay. I guess, is the, the thing. Because there was a bunch of other space pirates as well okay so yeah samus is the only survivor uh this little evie thing is just something they added in the manga don't worry about it <laughs> <laughs> okay uh the uh so yeah the chozo come down they aren't like they're allied with the galactic federation but they aren't strictly a part of it they just like kind of got the the signal as well and they were able to get here first okay. so they picked up samus brought her to i pronounce it zebus Oh, Zebus? Um, okay. Yeah. So they bring her to Zebus where they live. And we see Mother Brain, which is a big AI computer that the Chozo have created to help manage their facility. Um, Samus can't really survive on Zebus, so they have to give her some of their DNA, which is where you see her in like the, the pod. Okay, so it was getting, her. Getting infused with Chozo DNA, which also makes her like superhuman. Mm, okay. uh, and lets her use the power suit. The power suit is actually um, not entirely like machine. It's partially organic. So it's not like alive necessarily, but you could think of it almost like a, a, a plant. Like it doesn't have a consciousness, but it's, it's, it is like somewhat of a living thing that, that interfaces with her body. Okay. That makes yeah. sense. I, what, so, also, what is it with uh, with uh, <laughs> fiction? And Ma Master Chief was also infused like a super a soldier, and that's how he got the armor. Uh, Captain America being infused, and well, he technically doesn't have an armor. 
But and then uh, well, and they then, need the reason why they're so much better than all the normal people running around. <laughs> always superhuman. Anyway. Yeah. So Samus uh, eventually leaves Zebus to join up with the Galactic Federation. Okay. Uh, and she works under Adam Malkovich is her CEO. So she does that for a while, eventually decides she's not really into it, and leaves to become a bounty hunter. But Adam is a character who will come up later. Yep. So meanwhile, back on Zebus, um, the Chozo have actually created the Metroids. Oh, they created them. The Met- Yeah, so Mother Brain and the Metroids are both a creation of the Chozo. So they are... Kind of going about their business when suddenly something goes very wrong. Um, Mother Brain betrays the Chozo, takes over the facility and the Metroids, and has turned out to be aligned with the Space Pirates. So the Space Pirates come down and they all take over Zebus. Uh, this news gets back to the Federation, and who did they send for? Samus, oh, of Samus. course. Okay. And that old. brings us to Metroid 1, a.k.a. Metroid Zero Mission. Okay interesting so how did they get aligned with the with the space pirates if they weren't even alive before like they were created <laughs> by the by the by the parrot police well so mother brain has also like been around a while like they they already exist when samus is just like a little kid and is brought to zebus okay um i don't think they get into the specifics of how mother brain like contacted the space pirates but presumably because like they got to a point where they were handling so much for the chozo they were kind of able to sort of do whatever and they could probably send out whatever signals they wanted okay makes sense but yeah uh the space pirates it's it, it is a bit like up in the air uh metroid lore is not the deepest but people have theorized that they sort of just um I guess the thing to note about the space pirates is they're almost as much like a race as they are a group. Like they're a specific type of creature, uh, which is a bit confusing because you wouldn't expect them to be called that. But no. the the idea some people have is they're almost kind of hive mindy. So if you can sort of convince you, you can sort of take control of them if you're powerful enough, I guess. Or something along those lines. Or just smart enough in Mother Brain's case, I guess. But yeah. Somehow Mother Brain ends up uh, being the leader of the Space Pirates. What the frick? Okay, I was hoping that we actually got that address during the next uh, the next set of games. Because uh, talk about a <laughs> slim thread of plot right there. There's that. Just, there's a plot hole in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a juicy juicy detail that it feels like we don't really get expanded on because yeah. this isn't a super story heavy series. But anyway, anyway, we'll just uh, we'll gloss over that for now. <laughs> we'll go into Metroid Zero Mission. They came out in 2004. Is this a Game Boy game or not? this is Game Boy Advance? Game Boy yeah. Advance. Okay. Uh, so, obviously, we see uh, in this next picture, oh, nice pretty colors. We see Samus's ship flying to Sebas, as uh, she was called by the Federation to take care of the um, uh, the distress signal, I guess. Yeah. Uh, she, goes, uh, she goes in. Uh, we see the classic Metroid view. And uh, the, the planet seems to be like a combination of, I don't know, rocks and actual technology <laughs> together I, I i feels like i'm in a cave of some sort yeah uh so yeah i'm in a cave and he has a bunch of technology obviously the so the the parrot police were, were very wise in their young yes. age <laughs> um so in this next picture we obviously there's a, i played uh, what is it Sam super metroid super metroid yeah yeah. In though, and I understand what kind of plot there is during the game. There is there is mostly environmental storytelling and that sort of stuff. Um, so I can understand why we kind of skip a little few things. But so the next picture that I see is Samus just perplexed and looking. Well, I don't even know if perplexed. She's in the suit, so I can't see her expression. But <laughs> um, also she's uh, facing the other way. Uh, but what what is apparently this picture is there is a giant massive green monster mo mostly like a, a fat dinosaur king k rule but with claws and actually menacing and <laughs> it seems like obviously that's going to be one of the boss battles that we're gonna uh, fight 
uh, how this creature came about in the Parrot Police channel I uh, or world, I have no idea. I guess we're about to find out. But um, my guess is, obviously, you said that there was this hive mind mentality, and this is one of the police, the not the police, the the space, space raiders, pirates. space pirates, yes, yeah. that were brought brought down here to take over this uh, planet. As as oh, we see a close up image of Samus, and we can actually see her eyes through the visor of the helmet, and we uh, in in the reflection of the visor, you see some sort of creature. It looks like it has wings and a and a big peak. Obviously, it looks like that is the Samus arch nemesis, which is Ridley. So Ridley came down to this planet again for some reason. They are connected. Uh, even so the mother brains woke up they're trying to take over the planet or wipe them down apparently they got tired of working together with the parrot police and uh on top of everything they have <laughs> to deal with the space uh pirates in the next uh image we see a bunch of little metroids kind of well they are free they're just kind of uh, floating around in a purple futuristic chamber and at the, in the, in, on the floor, kind of belly belly down, seems like there is some sort of, I don't know, I don't even know what to describe this creature. It doesn't look like the Choso because it has claws like a crab or a lobster, <laughs> and the face and the and the face itself it just has one yellow eye. My my guess is that this is one of the space pirates, and the one of the things that the Metroids can do. I never understood what they had just teeth. On top of it is that they can control you by sticking to you or absorb your energy. And my guess is that the Metroid, in, in order to expand, they're actually attacking their own in this situation. Uh, in the next picture, we see the beautiful and, and amazing mother brain inside of a tank, which a bunch of test tubes around. Obviously, that's the reason uh, she, the, the a mother brain called upon all the Metroids and the Space Pirates to take over this and take uh, take her out of there. She's almighty and powerful in this in this situation. And this, obviously, as we all know from Metroid and at, at least the Metroids that I played, Samus goes in, takes over, and finds out that all the Choso had died because of Mother Brain and that she is filled with revenge and rage and decides to destroy Mother Brain once and for all. In this next picture, we see uh, the what seems to be a broken tank. Uh, all the glass has been shattered, and uh, there's a lava. And I'm, I guess, and it says the word "self-destruct mechanism activated." Evacuate immediately. So my guess is this is the final boss. We destroy Mother Brain. Uh, she, we are like the heck no with this. All the Metroids start uh, dying because they were connected together, and we are starting to escape. The planet, uh, the planet is about to self-destruct. And in the next picture, we see a giant explosions and Sam is returning. Like, well, not returning, but fleeing the, the planet. Right. And that'll do it for Metroid 1. So pretty, pretty quick, pretty simple. It's an NES game <laughs> originally. So yeah, you were pretty spot on. Uh, Samus goes to Zebus, fights Kraid and Ridley, which are the two main bosses you need to beat to get to Mother Brain. They are both just members of the Space Pirates. Um, the Metroids are kind of like... The, the Space Pirates don't really know what they're dealing with. So they uh, they aren't really in control of the Metroids. The Metroids are kind of just like wild animals. So okay. some of the Space Pirates just get like wrecked by them because they're incompetent and suck. <laughs> uh, but Mother Brain can kind of like partially control the Metroids, I believe, is a thing uh something like that so they're trying to use the metroids as like a weapon which is a very recurring theme in this series is different groups trying to use the metroids as weapons and i don't understand uh, but yeah. why they're not even cute they're like they're disgusting floating brains with teeth well they're they're very hard to kill samus can only kill them with the ice beam by freezing them and right. then blowing them up right. otherwise they're completely immune to damage uh, yeah, they absorb your energy, so they're like very, very dangerous, very deadly. And okay, but Samus is able to blast through them all, get to Mother Brain, destroy Mother Brain, and then the facility self destructs, and Samus flies away. Uh, are all the... and then some other stuff happens because it's a remake, but we don't care about any of that. It doesn't matter. <laughs> are all the parents dead at this point? Did we establish that? Uh, it is 
kind of unclear just in general. Okay. But um, my thought is, yeah, the ones on Zebus at least were dead, but we'll see in a bunch of other games, specifically the Prime games, uh, that the Chozo, in fact, inhabited a lot of different worlds. They were a very technologically advanced uh, race. Well, they're the ones who give you all the power-ups during the, the statues, yeah. I guess. That's why they resemble the, the picture of those. Uh... Yeah, and that's why um, Samus like can get those power-ups in her suit, is because both the suit and the power-ups are made by Chozo. Mm-hmm. So I think that's why a lot of the games feel the need to justify, like, oh, these power-ups are Chozo artifacts of some kind, which is why they just happen to work with Samus's suit. Okay. And, uh, but I still want to know the explanation of why she loses all the powers in every single game. But anyway, uh, moving on to Metroid 2, which is also came out as a remake as Metroid Samus Returns. Uh, this is, yep. uh, full disclosure here, this is the one I played, so I'm going to see how much I recollect or I remember from this game. Um, yep. in this And then in this next picture, we see a... I don't remember this part. Uh, there is a <laughs> old man just kind of... I think he's a, it's a, it's a human, although he has four fingers. Or I, I, maybe I just can't see all the fingers. I think... I think it's five, yeah. Okay, okay. It's just a weird angle. So there's a there's an old man just kind of uh, move. It, has its hands up in the air through a what looks like a coliseum and a bunch of people looking at him, a sky coliseum because you can see the clouds, and <laughs> behind them there's or a, a space. Space is it space? <laughs> it looks could like... be a planet in the background. It's hard to it's hard uh, to I, tell. I guess you're right. This may be a spaceship or some sort. In any case, <laughs> it makes sense given that what the setting of the game is. But in any case, behind them, there is a hologram or a holographic image of the Metroid. And I'm guessing this is some sort of cult that praises the Metroid and their existence and wants to save them in some way. (laughs) Because, I don't know, he's wearing robes and looks like some sort of priest. Um, In this next image, we see what looks like a... uh, I don't know, Warhammer 40, 40k <laughs> Space Marines <laughs> Space yeah. Marines with giant guns. Like, even Mar- Marcus Phoenix will be jealous of these guns. Uh, we're just exploring a planet. They have a very big red, uh, red, red uh, laser sight to them for some reason. Um, they seem to be exploring the remains of a planet. Maybe this is Civis or Zevs or Zevis, whatever you pronounce it. And they're just kind yeah. of searching about and exploring and this next image uh, this looks like Savas so I'm guessing Samus returns returns to Savas it makes sense to me so we're gonna go with that we see this spaceship I think this is Samus' spaceship flying towards the planet itself and we see in this next image Samus just came down this is 3D by the way but amazing and we see a bug creature that sort of has a, I don't know what, what how to even describe this. Like a spheric vibe to it, which looks like the center of a Metroid, but is, I don't know, but it, this looks like just like a, a beetle of some sort, like an evil beetle. And Samus is shooting at it. So obviously there's creatures in this area now. This has been uh, overtaken, how many, I don't know how many years this passed, but uh, this, this area has been overtaken by all the flora and fauna of the planet. Um, and then we, we, as we move along, we see one of the boss battles of the video game where you are now kind of, you have like that, that purple and blue suit now. And obviously you have a bunch of upgrades under your belt and you're fighting some sort of, looks like a T-Rex without arms, with a big neck and a radiant blue belly, uh, which I, it, it seems to be the same belly that the Beatles have. Man, I don't remember anything about this game. <laughs> um, I was about to say, are you sure you played this one? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, 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 man, it's, I don't understand why I don't recollect. But yes, I did play this one and I beat it. I, remember, I, I know that for sure. So yes, you are fighting this monster, obviously, with a space... Uh, probably the space pirates came back. Um, you see a bunch of eggs kind of hatched in the background. So you, you're kind of wondering what kind of creatures are taking over this planet at this moment. Because obviously, given that the Space Marine was exploring the area, they might have gone missing. And obviously, Samus came by and see what, see what happened. And this part I do remember. 
This picture is of Samus with a small little Metroid. That is a last surviving Metroid, which you obviously you don't you are very scared of the Metroid. But this one is cute. Uh, it likes you. You like it, and you start developing a relationship with it because there it's a it's a fun it's a fun time. And I, if as far as I remember, this is where you uh you're saving this little Metroid. You're taking it with you over the spaceship. And at the end of the day, you have to fight Ridley again because he shows up at the end trying to take the, yeah. to capture this Metroid and take it for its own, I don't know, usage. Uh, but you end yeah. up being... The, the Ridley thing was added in the in the remake, okay. which is why so I that, didn't include it here. So that wasn't part of the original story? Yeah. Okay, but so I just want to prove that I played the game, but I just don't recall <laughs> anything from the beginning. But yes, that right. is Sam okay. Samus Returns. So, yeah, let's turn it back. So, this first screenshot is the Galactic Federation, and this is where they're declaring that the Metroids are a danger to the universe and need to be eradicated. Okay, so no cult here. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he wearing those robes, then? Like, this Federation is supposed to be, like... Because big... he's, he's a big, big league, fancy guy. Okay. Important man. Just like in Star Wars, that they wear <laughs> the robes when you're fancy? I don't know. The Emperor? <laughs> But yeah, so so they send in some Galactic Federation troopers to SR388, which is, to their knowledge, the Metroid homeworld. Oh. Um, of course, we know that the Metroids were created by the Chozo, <laughs> so something about this is wrong. Um, Samus doesn't even know that, though, so when the Federation troopers go missing, Samus gets sent in because she's dealt with the Metroids before. Uh, this bug guy is actually an evolved Metroid. So this whole game is just fighting the different stages of Metroid, basically, right. and clearing them out, like, throughout the whole game. It's just you fighting, like, finding these Metroids and eliminating them, and that's, like, basically the whole game, which is why we skip straight to the final boss, which is the Metroid Queen. Oh, um, that's the queen? Yeah. The little cute thingy? No, the, the, the big dinosaur. Oh, the big dinosaur, okay. okay the okay, Metroid okay. Queen, okay, okay. yeah. So that was the original final boss before they added Ridley on as well. But um, yeah, Samus kills the Metroid Queen, which is the last Metroid, except she finds an egg and a little baby Metroid comes out and imprints on Samus. And Samus decides to keep this one. So with that, um, the all the Metroids on SR388 have been eliminated. And Samus leaves with the baby. And then the remake has like some bonus stuff that makes it very clear that like, there were Chozo here. This is where they first created the Metroids. Mm. Um, so it is. But then something happened because there's no Chozo around by the time Samus gets here. But you do see like the Chozo statues and stuff throughout the game, which yeah. clearly so, shows that they that they were doing something here at one point. So it is the Chozo's like well, not the Chozo home planet, but the the original planet. It's a planet the where the Chozo. Yeah, it, it's the Metroids, like, it was where they were first created. Okay. Uh, which is why it was mistaken for their home world, because they were kind of, like, running rampant on it. Um, gotcha. But yeah, as to what happened to the Chozo, uh, we will find out later, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. All right, we got Super Metroid X. I played this game too, I swear. Uh Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll find out if this actually happens. So yeah, the only two Metro games that I have played is Samus Returns and Super Metroid. So this is to the extent of my knowledge. Here we go. Uh, All right. The, the cover picture, we, we see the little Metroid inside of a, a, a container and yep. a bunch of dead people. So we'll yep. see what happens there. Uh, do we want to go through that? I guess at the beginning of the game, I remember that you, you go to the spaceship and all the people are dead. Uh, the Metroid has escaped, uh, well, or it's insinuated that it was either escaped or captured. Uh, so you need to go back to Seabees or Seves, right? Seves? And, uh, um, yeah. Is that to, to figure it out? Oh, yes, this is the part. I remember this part. Uh, so you get to the end of the ship, and the little the Metroid is there, just kind of sitting there. And uh, you you are gonna pick it up, and all of a sudden, uh, apparently Ridley was camouflaged because uh, you have it, it's a reptile, so I'm guessing he has I don't know camo camo tech or some sort. Uh, so <laughs> in, in this one, Ridley, let me tell you, it goes through a lot of iteration. It looks so much bigger here than the previous ones. Um, but this uh, this Ridley obviously is gonna capture the little Metroid. You're not gonna let it let it get away, but it does. 
So the uh, spaceship explodes and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm without answers. So I need to go back to Seves. And in Seves, when you, when you first enter, I remember there was no, it seems like it was empty. There was nothing in there, yeah. but after a little while, after you turn on some switches and such, it turns out that it was uh, raided by the space pirates. There's a lot of space pirates in here and you have yeah. to go and destroy four bosses, big bosses. As you move along here, and this um, in this next picture we see one of them, which is obviously they're a lizard of some sort, which is why how the heck are the metro related to these people, like they're all reptiles, so I don't understand. But anyway, this is one of the, the I, I do not recall the names because I don't think they even said them in the game, and I didn't read any. Ma yeah, any I don't think they say them in the game. <laughs> so there's just uh, this is big giant lizard with two eyes where you have to fight them in two different levels and they, they you think it's big and then all of a sudden it like stands up and it's even bigger and you're like oh crap um in this next this next one is the other space pirate which is looks like an octopus well like a big brain with a big eye in it this one wasn't too <laughs> difficult to beat and then we have a big bug with that you sh that grabs you all the time and you have to use your what do you call it? Hook shot? I guess you can call it a hook shot. It's a grapple beam. Sorry? Grapple beam? Yeah, yeah, that thing. Uh, you have to use it to hook <laughs> to electric panels that are, are broken so that it will channel the electricity to you and you electrocute the beam and you kind of destroy it. And then the final one is obviously you got to fight Ridley. Ridley needs to give up at this point. Like three three times, at least the, the, you have to say three third time is the charm or, or you got to give up. Like you, well, you gotta remember that also all the Prime games happened before this game, so it's been even more than that. Okay, well, then they, they, <laughs> really, you suck. Like, let's just keep it going. Uh, or Samus, you can you, you gotta destroy this thing already. I don't think you're gonna miss it that much. Anyway, sorry, Batman said not to kill anybody, and that's one of my favorite characters. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you destroy, you you go and uh, beat really one more time, and obviously you get to the end of it, and you see the little vial. Uh, for the metro, the little metro that you got to keep has been broken, and you're like, "Oh no, what happened? Where did she go? Or it go? Or he went? I don't know." <laughs> uh, and it turns out that is now it's a massive metro. Like it, it grew exponentially by uh, by or something. Yeah. It's not. It's no longer cute. And it's. I, I believe if I remember correctly, was this being controlled before, so it didn't recognize us. But then at the end of the day, it started helping us out because it remembered that we were uh the fa we were its family so it starts helping us out as to, as we make our way uh oh no 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 this is the the ugly looking parrot um <laughs> i remember this thing so the final boss is like what seems to be mother brain but some weird i don't know it took over Aichoso's body and it just grew it ex ex substantially cuz it looks like the leg of Aichoso the body of I don't know the inside out of a Chozo, and the 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 face itself is just ugly. Like the teeth itself, oh my, what what an awful <laughs> creature! And it's just shooting a a beam from its eye, uh, and and imagine the brain is actually you. There is no cranium that you can see the brain, and there's spikes through it. So my guess is that obviously the space fires were experimenting and trying to recreate the Metroids, and they, it was this experiment that went out of hand. This is the last boss, and uh, as it's about to destroy you, and then your your friend, the big met, the little Metroid, which is now big Metroid, comes in and he helps you out by attacking this big monster. Oh yeah, that's the next picture. See, I do remember. I remember. Uh, <laughs> and he starts sucking the brain out of the other, the 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 weird creature that came about, uh, which allows you to to take out its shield and start blowing it over, and. Obviously, after after you destroy it, as every other Samus game, so apparently every single base that you that you go to has a self destruct sequence. So you basically have to, it's obviously blowing up. But if you take the a separate route, you can actually go into a little area where it has a bunch of animals, and you can rescue those animals uh, for the next time. I don't know how you rescue them. You cannot just open the door and you let them out. Out, but how they survive <laughs> the explosion. Who the heck knows? Because you actually have to get out of the ship and you can see a big explosion. These animals look like little monkeys and a, a, and a flamingo, but a green flamingo. So I don't know how they actually <laughs> got to escape, but apparently they do. Because I remember playing this on a stream and the chat yelling at me that I didn't rescue the animals, even though I didn't know where they were. So 
<laughs> and yes, there you see the All right. the final image is the the ship uh, as you fly away again after an explosion. I see a theme. Here. What happened to the What happened to the big Metroid? It died. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So pretty spot on. Um. Yeah. So Super Metroid takes place like basically immediately after Metroid Two. So Samus drops off the baby Metroid. You gotta remember that in the original game there were no space pirates the original metroid 2 so okay yeah they were like waiting and samus dropped off the metroid and then they kind of swoop in and try to steal it mm. um after after not being in the the metroid 2 but Which i guess now it changed so that ridley ridley gets beat and then immediately like gets back up and just flies off so that super metroid yeah, that doesn't can make happen. any sense <laughs> uh yeah so Ridley steals the baby, um, the, the space station explodes, and Samus goes back to Zebus. Why did she go back to uh, Zebus? I, can't, I couldn't explain that. Because um, I believe that's where she sees, like, either she sees Ridley going there, or she, like, gets some kind of signal that is like, oh, activity is going on, but that shouldn't be happening because Zebus is supposed to be abandoned now, right? Yeah. Um, Something along those lines. So, again, we have to beat a number of bosses before we can get to Mother Brains. So, Craven and Ridley are back from the first game, as well as Fantoon, who is like this kind of ghost guy in the, the ghost ship. And I think the third one is Dragon, and he's just, yeah, like a weird underwater crab bug thing. Um, I forgot you were underwater in but, here. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so the Metroid is MIA. Um, Samus eventually starts closing in on Mother Brain when the big Metroid shows up and saps all your energy. Uh, but then, yeah, when you get down to one health, it suddenly stops and it starts, like, kind of crying. Like, it seems to recognize you. And it leaves. So, obviously, at that point, we know, oh, it's the baby Metroid. Mm -hmm. um, and clearly, there's something kind of special about it, that it grew to this size. And the other Metroids we see in the game are all kind of normal-sized. But anyway... You go and fight Mother Brain, but then when you beat her, it turns out she's got this big, like, biomechanical body thing now as well. And she hits you with this attack that drops you to almost death. And they're charging it up again, but then the, the Metroid comes in and grabs them. And, uh, like, seems to drain Mother Brain, and then the Metroid goes over to Samus and starts healing them. Mother Brain's color comes back, and they start attacking the Metroid. and um destroy it but the metroid gives to you the the power for like the beam the same beam that uh mother brain hit you with because the metroid absorbed it and then uh gave it to you basically so you become super powerful with the hyper beam and you pretty easily destroy mother brain and that triggers self-destruct of course but this time it's the entire planet that blows up, but yeah, not before you go and save the animals, which is absolutely pivotal, as you will see shortly. <laughs> Wait, what, 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 what's yeah, that... different about the self-destruction of the first time uh, just being the base and this one being the planet? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but Zebus, Zebus is gone. Zebus is completely gone by the time we get to Metroid Fusion or Metroid 4, okay. which is... Currently, the latest game in the timeline, and where we are at right now. It's alongside Planet Vegeta. <laughs> All right, so Metroid Fusion, which is Metroid Four, I guess. Uh, yep. Oh, okay. For the first time, we don't go, we don't see Samus flying towards a planet. We actually see Samus flying towards a space station called BSL. BSL stands for Big Something. <laughs> I should probably look up what that actually stands for. I don't even for. know what it stands for. <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's a big spaceship. It has the board BSL on the side, uh, I don't, or the acronym BSL. I don't know what that means. Uh, so we'll move on. She goes in there. Uh, this doesn't seem to be like the spaceship. It seems like she went to a different planet. And she's being accompanied by the space marines that we saw in the previous image. So because we see that, but this is in 2D sprite form like we are used to. So this is in-game. We see the space marine in the back. Uh, we see Samus in some sort of uh, planet that has a lot of flora. Uh, it it looks more. It, it doesn't have any machinery, so it doesn't look very technological. It looks more raw, 
and there is a specimen kind of flying in it and it looks yeah. yellow so my guess I'll, I'll cut in here for a sec yeah, yeah. just to tell you um the name of these things okay uh this is an x parasite a what so, x parasite x like the... so like the leather x okay. and then parasite yeah x parasite so obviously we're done with the metro so we gotta introduce some sort of parasite now so we're gonna go with the x <laughs> parasite um uh, the, the space marines are like, uh, so you know you have dealt with weird creatures in the past. Well, let me let me tell you about this X parasite that we just found in this planet. Come help us out here. So that was essentially where she's going. She's uh, she's the expert on weird alien creatures. I am still yet to piece piece together how she lost that super beam power that she gained in the previous game because that <laughs> seems unfair. And uh, she was overpowered before. And yeah, in this next one, oh okay, oh nice. So. This X parasite thingies apparently are self-destructed, just like Electrode, the Pokemon. And <laughs> they, if you get too close to them, they're actually very powerful and they kind of suck you in. You know that you said that the suit was organic. So in this case, yep. the, the way that it was, the X parasite actually fuses. That's why it's a cold nature fusion, see? Uh, it fuses okay. with the uh, suit itself uh, to create some sort of other form. And it fused with uh, Samus' uh, suit, uh, but it ended up being a bad parasite X, so who calls a good parasite X, right? Uh, you call it a parasite <laughs> or something like that. Um, better, a, a nicer letter. But this one obviously takes over Samus' body, it starts infecting her with a disease, and that's why we, in this next image, what we see is Samus' cannon to be almost destroyed. She's in a, like a hyperbolic chamber or some sort, or a healing chamber. There's a bunch of cables hooked up to her body. They didn't bother taking out her suit um, because they, obviously she has the parasite attached to her, so they don't want to like mess around with it too much. So they are analyzing the data and they're like, oh, I don't know. The only way to save you is to the only antidote is a Metroid. So that's where we see this. The it's, it almost seems like a DNA sequence on the right side, and on the left side we see the the hologram of a. Metroid. We're obviously looking into a monitor right now. Uh, in this next, and uh, this. Oh no 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 no! Sorry 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 sorry. So there's a bunch of so the the parasite doesn't actually interact with uh, Samus's body or her chosen DNA. It actually interacts with the Metroid DNA that was fused with her in the last game through that big brain that gave you the powers. So. Okay. As the, the the DNA sequence, it recognizes it, and all of a sudden, as the 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 the, the suit and her be start becoming one. So in this next picture, we see Samus. What looks like the suit is kind of being absorbed by her skin, and she is blue for some reason. Uh, so <laughs> that you 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 kind of get start to see in this weird form taking taking uh, uh taking Samus over, I guess. So in this next uh. Picture okay. with and then I'm just gonna okay. I'm gonna cut in one more time okay. and introduce this last. Well, there's two more characters. So okay. this one is a computer. Uh, so whenever you see this little purple dot, it's your your new computer talking to you. Okay. And Samus calls them Adam. And do you do you recall an Adam? From oh, the the the, the Adam the 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 the. the... Space Federation guy yeah. who was her boss. Her her commanding officer. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. She gets this this computer that's giving her orders. So as a joke, I guess she calls it she names it after her last the last person she took orders from, basically. <laughs> okay, that's nice. Uh but obviously Adam is the expert side fuse together with her. And they may, they obviously because her her suit is part machine as well. Uh they, she is very technologically advanced. Imagine like a Jarvis or a Cortana. Uh, yeah. Well, he's more. I'll say this. He's more in her ship than in her suit. Okay. Okay. Good to go. So, no, so more like Cortana than uh, than, yeah, than Jarvis. Definitely. So, in this situation, uh, we see Adam talking to her. But this is the the map overlay that we see that on any of the Metroid games. We see the different areas. Um, we see. Oh, it, it actually tells you which areas are locked. Oh, how nice! Kids nowadays have it easy. <laughs> Super Metroid didn't tell you that crap. <laughs> Uh, in this, and then he says the field team were infected by the X parasites, just like you, Samus. But obviously, you like the X, the the team itself is uh, is human. So when they were infected, they died. 
you, on the other hand, became more powerful because you're inter- You're just a weird science experiment at this point, Samus. You have Choso, Metroid, <laughs> X, Parasite, Human. I don't even know what you are anymore. Um, oh, yeah, in this next picture, we actually see Samus. A close-up of Samus. You can see her uh, face. Actually, this is this is the other new character, oh, that's a new character that I have to introduce. So this is S-A-X. The frick? <laughs> All right, explain it to me. Uh, <laughs> I mean, may, maybe, you know... I'll, I'll say note the color of the suit here, and maybe that'll help. I mean, the color of the suit looks like the old suit that she had, not not, not the blue one anymore. Uh, but the, what, what, what this is, is a clone of Samus. So obviously the ex-parasite, uh, it, it was, she had a back stomach ache, and she just went to the bathroom, and something came out. And what came out is this character right here. Uh, obviously, it took, <laughs> it took a little a little time to for this to actually come out. Uh, but yes, after after it took form and everything, um, it, 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 there, Samus is like, well, I have this new power in me. You can have my old suit back. Okay, yeah, that's where we're going with. Uh, actually, we're I was are we playing as Samus here? I was playing as the other character. I'm not even know because that looks like Samus's old suit. Yeah. So this, you're playing as the blue ball up top. Oh, you're playing as the blue ball up top. See, there we go. So that's Samus. Yeah, Samus is in the morph ball. Yeah. Is it not a co-op game? Interesting. Uh, no, it's not a co-op game. <laughs> it's definitely not a co-op okay, game. Okay, okay. Uh, because in this picture, we see a blue ball, like Matt mentioned, on an upper platform. And in the lower platform, you see Samus's old suit, um, which I'm guessing as SAS. The new... S-A-X, X. yeah. Why you add X to everything? Obviously, it's, well, I guess X Parasite, X... That's, well, that's the theme of this game, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, so... Maybe maybe it tells you something about about what they are. Yeah, it's the X Parasite. <laughs> it's just cloned, like, obviously. She had a, it's, it's imagine having food poisoning, but what comes out is a clone instead of whatever <laughs> other thing comes out. Um, okay, so it looks like Adam, this uh, machine, obviously, she doesn't trust anybody. She's a lone warrior. Uh, that's why she became a bounty hunter. Um, Adam on this end, uh, this uh, this machine is actually being. It, it, there's a there's a it's, it's a double agent. He's working for a big corporation or in the background. And in this picture, we see does Samus suspect anything? Is the is the is the quote? And we see a screen sort of imagine Metal Gear, but the image inside of the. Uh, of the portrait, it cannot be seen. It's just a shadow of a, of a, some sort of human or humanoid creature. Yeah. And obviously, it, 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 like Adam is spying on Samus while she explores this planet and tries to find the cure for her disease. Now, this is definitely the Samus we can see her still being uh, uh, used over by the disease. But I, I I feel like this is where we leave Ridley, right? We just leave him be, because what I see here is a we're in a frozen area. And a big frozen statue of Ridley. I really has been frozen over in this planet, and he should be left there to, but to think about all the mistakes that he has made in the past and what he has lost so many times. Um, <laughs> but I'm guessing Samus is sees Ridley. This is like it's frozen, and she starts questioning what the heck is going on right now. There's some 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 sort of big conspiracy. My guess is that she's actually inside the ship of this BSL. Or this big corporation, and she's finding out that they're using uh, human. Uh, they're investigating this ex parasite to exploit it, and they are even uh, taking advantage of the space uh, invaders or space ra- space raiders, space pirates. Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh wow. Okay. So these are the little creatures. Um. This next image we see Samus uh, entering a, pl- a one of those uh, hovering platforms. But on the, the what's interesting about it is that the little creatures that you saved in the previous game are actually here. Somehow they got out of the planet. Somehow they made it to this uh, space station. Who knows how? But they are here, and they're gonna help you get. Um, they're gonna try to cure you from this infection that you got as part of the experiment. <laughs> or maybe they're just waving goodbye to you because in this nice picture. Uh, all you see is you are in the same kind of platform, but it's an elevator and it's taking you down a big, big, massive uh, shaft. So uh, you are about to find out the cruel little secrets that this corporation is hiding. And you get to the bottom of it and you see what looks like a giant metallic frog of some sort. <laughs> I don't even know what this is, but it's some sort of big mechanical enemy that you're about to face uh 
and it, it's obviously what the uh, federation has been hiding they've been experimenting and trying to be, to create the, the perfect uh i don't know parasite slash creature that they could control to take over other planets um Actually, this is not the final boss, but uh, as in this next image, we see most of the map has been explored. And Adam is telling you, even so, I did not approve of bypassing security level 4. So it looks like uh, Samus is up to something that she suspects that Adam that is hiding something from her. And even though she did not, uh, she, the, the Adam didn't approve of the security bypassing, uh, Samus is like, screw you. I know what you're up to. I need to get. I need to head down there and understand what the freak is happening here. And we head down to the restricted lab that the Federation has, and you figure out and you see a big container again, similar to where Mother Bane was raised. And in the background, uh, which uh, behind a glass window, you see a bunch of Metroids in the restricted laboratory. So obviously, they found out about the Metroids. The space raiders, uh, the, the space pirates uh, were trying to protect the, the metro, but they couldn't. And now the Space Federation is trying to take advantage of those creatures since they know the power that they hold. Um, so, But in this next picture, or in this next image, uh, you are in the same place, but you are fighting all the metroids who are seemingly escaping or you're trying to destroy them. Uh, but you are on the side. It looks like you were weak by, by all the 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 fusion and the parasite that you had to hold. So uh, your friend SAX starts helping you out and destroying all the <laughs> little uh, Metroid around. And then in the next image, we see the, uh, it looks like, again, the same map, Adam talking to you and he says, Samus, you shouldn't have done that. You ignore your orders. So basically she destroyed the Metroid. She knows of the power that they hold. She knows that they destroy CVs or Sevis. And she still has uh, the only metric that she cared about died already, given her these powers, and she she has to get it, <laughs> get it over with. This is done. I'm tired of uh, of playing uh, of, of just doing metrics. Let's move over to another creature at this point. <laughs> and this and then Samus says this mechanism. There that's are... that's still Adam actually. Oh, Adam? Samus would be in the top if it was. Samus. Okay, okay, so, yeah. So Adam is ta is talking, and he says this mechanism. There are now no fewer than 10 SAX aboard. Oh, okay, okay. So basically, they were trying to experiment. Uh, this whole plot twist, it wasn't necessarily that they were <laughs> experimenting and using Metroids. is that they wanted to test Samus to expand all of her abilities and absorb them through this X-Parasite and create clones of her to actually go and, and take over the galaxy. And Samus goes, are you joking? Do they know how dangerous the X are? See, see, that's what I mean. Like, it's, like even though uh, this X, 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 S, S, SAX has been uh, helping you, it wasn't actually helping you all this time. It was just trying to, uh, to take over. It was actually the villain this whole entire time. And Adam in this next picture says, it will certainly be difficult. They don't expect your help. Um, they don't ex uh, I'll, I'll say like th this isn't definitely isn't a conversation like one for one i've cut out a lot here okay okay so. okay okay i was gonna <laughs> it's say it's up to you to piece it together and then this next part is saying it will certainly be difficult they don't expect your help so at, at this point they understand the, the the how dangerous this sax has they're destroying this entire ship and samus is like okay but like i, I gotta help him out I don't know how I'm going to do it all. And the, and Adam is like, yeah, well, it, it's going to be difficult. They don't expect your help after everything that they did, uh, that they done. But you know, you're Samus, so you're a superhero. So go do your thing. <laughs> and then in this next picture, Adam also says, I have been ordered to confine you until the ships arrive. So interesting. So it looks like the Federation doesn't care. They think that they are a big, powerful corporation that can take over everything they're gonna just use those big space marine looking gears of war looking people um, <laughs> to take over here and maybe that's the start of gears maybe that's where the locust came from who knows but uh <laughs> and they're they're trying to confine samus in here but she's not she's not having any of it she's like screw you adam screw you federation i'm gonna take over thing i'm gonna do things on my own and that they, they then adam basically has a, a moment of uh, self-reflection and doubt. He doesn't even know what its real name is because it's basically... Well, there's a... yeah, remember, that's a name Samus gave him. So okay. it's not like 
he's supposed to be called that. Okay, they're having a heartfelt moment at this moment. It, uh, that Samus is trying to convert Adam and convince him that she should he should let her go. And Adam and then Samus is here says we, he would understand that some must live and some must die. So essentially, um, they, she's basically saying that some sacrifices have to be done. Uh, like some people here will die, and but we need to dis- we need to make sure that these ex uh, they uh, these ex clones of me don't get out in the world because they will basically or in the universe because they will essentially destroy everything. And Adam is like, okay, no, I understand. You know, I I feel you. I am a robot, but I have feelings too because apparently that's a common theme on my on very uh, various fiction. So Adam is like, before the Federation <laughs> arrives, I'm gonna let you go. Oh, what the frick! <laughs> In this next image, <laughs> we see Sam is so perplexed, almost like I don't know. Maybe she. This is the moment that she understands that, that that Adam actually has feelings too, and she's just so emotionally driven by it. Or maybe she just saw something massive or big that is about to happen here, <laughs> and we're about to find out what it is. Uh, so she finds the uh, she finds out the big secret, and Adam goes, "Any objections to the plan?" I mean, the, given the uh, Samus expression, this is not a good plan. Uh, but we're go- but obviously <laughs> Samus just says, "We're gonna go with it." What the frick is this? Um, what the? Maybe. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is this is all about uh, fusions, right? So maybe Samus, all, all the ex uh, parasites combine into one giant creature uh, that looks again like a t-rex but big arms four eyes a tube for a mouth with teeth in it and everything and obviously that's the final boss you can you try to take it on your own you're about to die but then all of a sudden your clone your actual clone the one the one uh, clone that you had the sax comes to the rescue just like every story not all race all people in the same race are villains and SAX proven to be one of Samus's allies in this scenario. And again, we see the classic image of them after destroying this. The space uh, station where they were at gets destroyed. And Samus uh, flies in her new ship that is now purple, given that she's fused over with this thing. <laughs> and there's two, two, two more things. Uh, so in this one, it looks like they're flying from the explosion galaxy to... But seems to be P three, so somewhere, some other galaxy <laughs> along the way, and they say they lent me a hand. So there, so basically, there seems to be some signals, something coming over. Adam obviously is now with Samus. They're one to one. They have a relationship, and it's like, okay, the, the next adventure is about to begin. Uh, these people lend me a hand. Let, let, let's go visit them, and then when you get when you oh what the frick really. Okay, never mind. It's not the other people. It's those creatures that you saved in the in the second in, in the third game. They are the ones who apparently lent Adam a hand to help you escape from the explos from the explosion. And you see an image of them at the end. You see the 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 green flamingo and the three uh, monkey <laughs> aliens, all all sleeping together in, as one happy family. Nice. <laughs> and that's how the Metro oh, yeah, series ends. That's how Metro ends. That the perfect conclusion to this whole thing. <laughs> All right. So yeah, obviously a lot more story driven here, um, and it's a bit of a struggle just given <laughs> it, a lot of it is delivered in just like text. But uh, yeah. So going back to the start, the BSL stands for uh, Biotic Space Laboratories Research Station. Where did so the research they threw station in two come? Extra words. Yeah, I know, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I feel betrayed. But um, yeah. So this is set up near SR three eighty eight, which you will rem- remember as the Metroid two planet, the Metroid homeworld. Okay. So Samus's help has been requested because they've been noticing strange stuff going on here. Uh, specifically, these X parasites have started popping up, and they don't know why. And Samus goes down. Um can't really do anything about them gets infected by it and is like very close to death um but eventually they find they can cure her if they give her a vaccine made from metroid dna 
uh, specifically from the the baby Metroid, I, because that was the last Metroid. I sh- I, sh- I should have I should have put it like together. I, I I think I was going that way, but then I went with more of a like a combination of DNA. <sighs> Come on. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So it Samus herself gets the Metroid DNA, and they have to strip away a whole bunch of her suit because it's so infected, and they quarantine it on the BSL. Um, and that's why her suit looks so stripped down at this point, as well as like the Metroid DNA. And they find out, oh, the Metroids are actually the natural predators of the X parasites. Uh, <laughs> How convenient. So the reason the X parasites started cropping up is because you killed all the Metroids. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. So um, now Samus can go back into the BSL and be immune to X parasites because she has the Metroid DNA. Um, so Adam just kind of gives you orders throughout the whole game, uh, but you run into SAX, which is your, like, the parts of your suit that were quarantined because they were infected basically turn into SAX. (laughs) Okay. So SAX will just, like, stalk you around the, like, the station. Like, you, you can't hurt them. They're unkillable. And if they see you, they'll, like, pursue you. So a lot of people have compared, like, those those robots in Dread that chase you around to, to SAX. Okay. That's how they act in this game. Fair. So they're kind of like a horror element almost. Um, yeah, like you said, eventually uh, we find out Adam is, is doing something kind of behind your back. He's getting contacted by a shadowy figure. Um Samus also finds a frozen Ridley, which is curious because, I mean, I know Ridley's died several times, but after Super, he was supposed to be really, really dead for real. Uh, But the Galactic Federation, for some reason, has a frozen Ridley here. Um, Eventually, you do fight the Ridley. It's like a corpse, like it's already dead, but it gets infected by the Uh, X-Parasites. So you fight like zombie Ridley. Um. And then, yeah, you also find the things you saved in Super are being held here. So Samus rescues them again, uh, which is why it was obviously very important that you rescue them in Super. I mean, there's, there's no um, continuity. These people were saved regardless of if they <laughs> blew up in the planet or not. <laughs> so this elevator scene is actually a part where, like, you've gone up and down these elevators a whole bunch, but here it breaks down, like the power goes out, and you have to, like, break through the wall to escape. And this kind of marks the point in the game where Samus starts, like, not just following Adam's orders and sort of doing her own thing a bit more, which is why we get, um, oh, yeah, so Nightmare here is, I only threw this boss in because they actually show up in another game, but, yeah, this is just the guy who gives you the gravity suit, they have gravity powers. Yeah, so Um, it's not a boss battle or anything. Oh, it is a boss battle, uh... Yeah, you fight it, and then you get the gravity suit. And they have, like, a, a weird face underneath the mask. It's it's a whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They, like, start leaking goop as you fight them, and then the mask falls off, and they have, like, a gross slug face. Oh, nice. But, uh, anyway. Yeah. So Samus has started, like, doing her own thing. She's getting upgrades that she shouldn't be getting because the Federation, like, doesn't want her getting these upgrades. And Adam starts commenting on it, like, oh... You weren't supposed to do that. Or like, oh, I didn't think that you would have that upgrade. Um, But yeah, eventually you get into the restricted laboratory where you see a bunch of Metroids, again, cloned from the baby, which was the last Metroid. Uh, Samus is not happy with this. She actually frees the Metroids, which don't attack her because she is now part Metroid herself Mm -hmm. because she has the baby's DNA. Um But the Metroids, as the natural enemies of the X-Parasites, the natural predators, uh, so SAX shows up and is like, oh shit, Metroids, like, that's bad danger. Um, Starts trying to kill them, can't do anything, the Metroids just engulf SAX and devour it. And that is how SAX is defeated here. Uh, But yeah, the Metroids just leave you alone. They're they're like on your side in this game. Oh yeah, (laughs) nice. So, um, yeah, Adam is very not happy with what you've done, ignoring your orders and freeing the Metroids. And he mentions that SAX uh, 
because it's an X parasite, it's actually been like reproducing asexually. And there's actually 10 of them running around now. And the Federation wants to capture them to use them. And Samus is like, that's ridiculous. They're super dangerous. As soon as the Federation shows up here, they're all just going to get infected. And like, you can't risk that. Okay. Uh, but Adam is like, no, we have our orders. We're going to lock you down. Um, they didn't expect that you would help. They knew that you would try to kill the SAX. So we're trapping you in this room. Samus yells at him and calls like calls him Adam out loud for the first time in the game, which seems to confuse them. Uh, Samus tells them a bit about Adam, and it seems to like have a bit of a change in their demeanor. So they're like, actually, what you should do is if you go here, you can trigger the BSL to crash into SR388, the planet, and destroy both of them. And that will like actually wipe out the hex. Because the X aren't just on this space station, they're on the planet as well. So you have to destroy both of them. Oh my gosh. And then this, Samus this, has her kind of like. They're going to call her the planet destroyer. Moments at of this realization. Point. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then they say, any objections, lady, which is what Adam always said to Samus. So oh. we learn that like this AI is actually like partially based off her old CO, Adam. Is that why she's so um, perplexed? So it was a very. It was a very fitting name. Yeah, oh, okay. she. I guess she realizes it in that moment. So this is the final boss. Uh, this is actually an Omega Metroid, which you would have fought some of these in Samus Returns. Of course, I wouldn't expect you to remember. But <laughs> yeah, basically the idea is that the only place where Metroids can like turn into these types of forms and like that Queen Metroid as well mm -hmm. is on the planet SR388. Uh, that is ultimately why the Chozo on SR388 got, like, lost control of the Metroids and were overrun by them, is because they, they evolved because of that planet. And this space station was set up specifically to mimic SR388 because the, the Galactic Federation wanted to use, like, all the evolutions of Metroids. And, yeah. So, we encountered this Omega Metroid... Unlike the other Metroids, this one is hostile. It seems to, like, recognize that Samus is not actually a Metroid. Uh, but one of the SAXs shows up and starts fighting it. Like, they're not necessarily helping you so much as, like, this is their instinct, is they need to kill the Metroids because uh... the Metroids are, like, their arch enemy to the X-Parasites. So it shows up. It can't really do anything, though. But it does actually have the Ice Beam, which you haven't gotten it's to this point. Um, I guess it was like the, the, the part of Samus's armor that had the ice beam in it or something. Okay, but, but at the very least, it, it helps. The, this explains why Samus lost her powers. That makes sense to me. Yeah. So, yeah, because basically a bunch of her suit had to be taken away. Okay. And that's why, like, you, you gradually get it back. Um, but yeah, the Omega Metroid kills this SAX, but then that allows Samus to take back her Ice Beam and kill it. Um, then her ship just kind of flies in through that window in the background. And it's because the the animals helped fly the ship here. What the <laughs> frick does this Because they, they've, they've just been chilling out on on the the ship since you rescued them. What the? And... How? <laughs> <laughs> the, the flamingo doesn't even I don't have know, man. arms. Okay, anyway. Maybe maybe the monkey did most of the legwork. <laughs> <laughs> the monkeys, I don't okay. know. Okay. But yeah, so this is where it ends off is um Adam is basically saying like you we may have made an enemy of the Federation because of what we did there, like we blew up their their research station and the planet. Um Wait. So Samus is like basically a fugitive at this point off with her like new AI ship friend as well as these animals that are are stowed on her ship now as well okay so but, the, but i mean the, the federation the, the, you, you, the problem when you trust somebody when you trust somebody <laughs> that you even bring in this little uh cute metroid that you miss is the only cute ever me metroid to ever exist in the history of metroids because all the other ones are ugly even when he grew up he was ugly um uh, yeah, and they they actually just took the DNA to clone it. You know what I mean? You you can never trust humans. This is the problem. Yeah. 
I, w I will say there is a bit more that I didn't include in here, but with Samus Returns, we actually did get like a bit more about what went on there when they were making the Metroids. So we see the Chozo created the Metroids specifically because they saw that the X parasites were like such a threat oh, to okay. the galaxy. And they're like, okay, we need to do something about this. They create the Metroids to eat the X parasites. Um, everything's going fine, except yeah, because of that planet, the Metroids start to evolve in unexpected ways and become hostile. So the Chozo send out a distress signal to try and escape as like everything's being ruined. And the like 100% completion reward we get for finishing off uh, Samus Returns to 100% is we see some Chozo show up uh, at the planet, some, some new Chozo from somewhere else, and they get in power suits and start killing all the Chozo that were on SR388. Wait, 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 rewind that a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so the Chozo on SR388 are like, okay, we've lost control of the Metroids. We need help. They send out a distress signal. More Chozo come, and those Chozo just wipe out the ones that were on the planet. Oh, with power armor. Yeah, and they have, like, the, the Samus-type power armor, because that is, like, a Chozo thing, yeah. Samus's power armor. Let me tell you, they make way better power armor than humans do. Those Space Marines-looking guys, what a piece <laughs> of garbage armor, right? let me tell you. How can you even move in that thing? Anyway. Um, yeah, I think, I think okay, overall, overall, it's interesting. So, apparently, so, so Metroid Dread, if we're not mistaken, is supposed to take place after this. Yeah, and Metroid Dread, from what they've said, is also apparently supposed to tie up, like, this arc of the story, as as the, the creator put it. So, I don't know to what extent that means. Um, we have seen a bit of, like, the Chozo with power armor in, in the trailers. Oh. We have seen there's Federation stuff going on. The, the bots you're running away from belong to the Federation. Um, okay. So, it's like... This could be, like, the last game with dealing with, like, the Metroid threat. This could be the last game dealing with the Federation as a threat. Like, but they've implied, like, this is going to be the end of, like, a significant storyline in the Metroid series. So Okay, that's, that's actually pretty cool. Now that I know what everything's going on and I kind of know what those little robots are all about, let me tell you, if I see a parrot in power armor, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be insanely cool um especially that moment where they where they like samus reconnects with their with like the race that actually raised her that would be lit yeah okay okay i like it thank you thank you for explaining that Matt. this uh, this was actually pretty interesting there's a lot of things in here the fusion one let me tell you it threw it out of left field because there's yeah fusion fusion becomes a lot more uh, story focused and a lot of people don't really like it for that it's it's kind of a divisive game and I will say I didn't manage to make it all the way through fusion I stopped part way oh okay interesting and I so, so yeah. but the, there's but I I do like I do like the story stuff here I think it's it's interesting for sure okay now, now I'm excited for and I'm excited even more for dread because I may actually be able to piece things <laughs> together. As opposed to when I play any you other understand what's any going Samus, on, yeah. any Metro game, I'm completely <laughs> lost. Um, I I rely on uh, on chat. As you can tell, I can I couldn't even remember Samus Returns. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I do remember finding those creatures. I just never pieced it together that it was actually Metroid for some reason. Right. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Cool. All right. So that has been this episode of Off Script. Thank you, Matt, for putting all the slides together. I hope you everybody enjoyed uh, the little run through that we have and it gives you a little bit of a catch up and a run through all the way to everything that you need to know all the way to Metroid Dread so that when you are ready to go when the game comes out and you are and you, you just put the pieces together yourself. Um, but if you enjoyed this sort of episode, let us know by emailing us at itsallfunatgamestv at gmail.com or by participating on the comments of the YouTube video because we want to hear from you. We want to hear from you. And if there's any gaming series that you would like us to do, let us know so we can do it together here. And because 
let me tell you, the more, the weirder the series are, the more we get around and the funnier it is. Because let me, the fusion, for example, fusion part, no clue what was happening. I think I got the first two slides <laughs> right and everything else was like completely wrong. <laughs> But the fact that, but technically that was Samus's clone. I'm gonna say that at the experts, I was Samus's clone. So, but yeah, yeah, it's it's kinda. But 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 it's in there. So now again, we we will continue this series. We will be doing the Metroid Prime next, which I'm guessing is somewhere in between Metroid One and everything else that happened, Matt. Yeah, so it's after Metroid One and before Metroid there Two. We go. So. So we got yeah, three more, three on. games to do in there, and a, well, at a fourth one that is coming out sometime in twenty fifty five. We'll we'll see. And some spinoffs. Don't forget about the There's spinoffs. spin-offs? <laughs> there sure okay. are. Well, we're gonna do the spinoffs as well. So may, make sure to keep an eye on the next <laughs> episode that we'll be releasing on any of your favorite podcast services, or if you want to again look at all the images and be actually be following along because apparently maybe I don't do a really good job of explaining what's in front of me. Uh, so go check the image out up on the YouTube by searching It's All Fun Games. You can all find it there. Uh, be part of the conversation. I want to know if you were actually be able to put the pieces together yourself or if you played the game. Let me know how Matt did explaining everything together and join the community by joining the Discord, which you can find by looking into the description of this episode. And also... If you are, if you if you like what you see, if you like what you hear, and everything, maybe you will find more in the It's All Fun Again family that you would like to see and hear. By uh, there's again, we talked about where there's a lot of postmortems. We me, Matt and I play a lot of games right now. We're playing through Psychonauts 2, and let me tell you, that's a journey on itself. Uh, catch up all the little bits and pieces of everything that we uh, that we've been playing, and which is just a fan, a, a, a nice and relaxing, casual conversation that you can find. Uh, on your and the same podcast services or by going deep dive into the games and actually uh, going through spoiler territory and during our post-mortem so go make sure to check those out as well but I'm, I'm i'm done rambling on matt it's time for us to leave you have any final thoughts in regards to the off-script metroid episode bye this has been chad no, not chat and games. So that that thing is long dead. Uh, this has been it's all fun and games. Off script. Signing off.